Hi, today I'm going to be making this very simple uh, display shelving unit and I think this is a great project for anyone uh, just getting into woodworking. We're going to use very simple butt joints strengthened with dowels and all the pieces are going to be the same width, same thickness. So we're going to be stepping up very slightly from what we've been doing in the getting into woodworking series and you'll be just taking your skills a little bit further uh, getting your confidence up and getting you ready for tackling larger and more complicated builds in future. Now I'm going to be using rough sawn lumber. This is a piece of uh, American white wood, uh, also known as tulip wood or poplar. And it's relatively cheap, so it's good for a first project. You're not going to be wasting a lot of money if you make a, an awful lot of mistakes. But uh, again, I think it's a fairly simple project and hopefully uh, you're going to do quite well with this and come up with a, a good result. Now don't worry if you're not confident taking rough sawn lumber and uh, preparing it down into the boards that you need for this project. You can actually order boards cut to the right thickness and close to the right width and obviously for length it's going to be easy enough for you to cross cut them. Now I'm building this totally unplugged so no power tools at all. Um, if you're getting into woodworking I think it's great to have a basic knowledge of using hand tools before moving on to power tools but obviously if you're used to power tools and you want to use them you can substitute them whenever you like but let's just take a look at the tools that you would need if you're going to do it unplugged now to deal with that large plank of rough sawn timber um, western style we'll be using a rip saw uh, panel cross cut saw and then for the cutting to length uh, much closer with a tenon saw if you're going Japanese route, pull saws, where you've got uh, Ryoba, which will do the ripping and also the rough cross cutting. And I've also got a Dazuki, which will be great for the fine cross cutting to length. We're also going to need a um, bench hook. Uh, this one's set up here for using the pull saws, uh, but also you could have one that flips over and works for using the tenon saw against it as a push saw. We're using dowels in this project. Uh, this makes for a strong and quite easy joint to do. And I think it's easiest to use a doweling jig. This is one I've made myself. You can see a video on that, uh, but you can also get them commercially very cheaply. Now, a lot of the preparation of components is going to be down to planes. And you can get away with either a number five or even a number four. The length of components in this project are relatively short and either of these planes will cope with that very well. You will actually see in the video that I use my number 8 plane which is considerably longer. Um, it has a lot more heft to it and I'm suffering with arthritis in my hands at the moment and a plane with more mass carries more momentum and uh, makes it more comfortable for me. But as I say you don't need such a large plane for this small project. Also for preparing the ends of boards nice and square I've got a shooting board here which will use the plane against the side of it and we can shoot the ends of the boards nice and square. For marking out of your components you're going to need a few different things from the rough board initially it would be great to have a tape rule that makes marking out rough lengths really quick. You might also want to use a chalk line for that. When it comes down to the component preparation, a um, couple of steel rules, one long, one shorter. It's very handy indeed. For rough marking, you can use a pencil. Uh, for anything else, we use a knife. And we'll also need a tri-square. Also, when I'm thicknessing, I find it really handy to have a pair of dial calipers. And this is my cheap one that I have around the workshop and gets knocked about a bit. But it's very easy to check round a board to make sure you've got a consistent thickness. And I almost forgot, because uh, we're doing dowels, we're going to need a drill to drill those dowel holes. Simple egg beater one like this can just about cope with the 6mm dowels, quarter inch dowels that we'll be using. When it comes to fitting the back, which adds a lot of rigidity, it's not essential, but it is, uh, does strengthen the thing up a lot. 
Uh, you will need obviously a screwdriver and there are two options here. You could take your backing material and simply screw it to the back of the case like so, but you're going to see it at the edges. So what I like to do is to use a rebate. So I'll rebate the side and the back can sit in the rebate. So that means you've got to cut that rebate. And the easiest way to do that is with a rebate plane. So I've got Stanley number 78, which will do a great job. But you'll see in the video that I use an old style wooden rebate plane, which used to be my grandpa's. So let's get on with the build. And if you make one of these yourself, please do send me some photos because I'd love to see them. I've finished my shelves uh, in paint and uh, I think that's quite appropriate for the wood I've used. Poplar takes paint really well and uh, that's actually the only part of the project where I do any sanding is after I put the undercoat on.